Hello everyone and welcome to this recording. In this re chapter we would be discussing about life, health and disability insurance. So what is life insurance? Life insurance is obtained by purchasing a policy with the insurance company promising to pay a lump sum to the person specified as beneficiary at the time of insurance death or sometimes why they are alive. In some policy, money is paid to the policyholder if he or she is still alive at a future date. Company makes promise to pay in exchange for payment of premium. So key terms in life insurance. There is an insured person. So let's say I am the insured person and there is an insurance company. So let's say Sun Life is an insurance company. So what do I do? I pay regular premiums to Sun Life. Okay. And I can I can have two policies. One policy pays only when in the event of my death to my beneficiaries. So I pay premium and the insurance company Sun Life takes on an obligation to pay my beneficiaries in my in the event of my death. This is first case. Second case can be I pay premiums and I buy a policy which pays either in the event of my death to the beneficiaries or to me at a future date so it's like a savings plan i keep on giving premiums and at a future date i get them back so the purpose of life insurance the purpose of life insurance is to protect someone who depends on you from financial loss related to your death so proceeds may be used to pay off your home mortgage and other death, other debts at the time of your death. Provide a lump sum payment through an endowment to children when they reach a specific age. Provide an education on income to for your children. Make a charitable donation on your death or provide for a retirement income. So if you ask me what is the purpose of life insurance policy, it is to support your beneficiaries. So pay off the immediate expense that in, that results as because of death. So immediate expense can be the service charges, the funeral charges and whatnot. Then pay off all your debt. So credit card debt, mortgages, etc, etc. And to provide a supporting income to your beneficiaries until they stand on their own feet. Okay. The proceeds may be used to pay off estate debt at the time of death, provide education for an income for survivors, make charitable donations or accumulate savings. Life insurance is one of the few ways to provide liquidity at the time of death. Principles of life insurance. So life insurance is based on the mortality rate. Mortality rate means the probability of a person dying so what mortality rate is defined according to age so probability of a person dying at the age of 30 is less than the probability of a person dying at the age of 60 so mortality rate will be less at the age of 30 vis-a-vis -vis at the age of 60 and insurance is based on mortality rate so mortality provides mortality table provides odds of you dying based on your age and sex your premium is based on your life expectancy and projections for payout for a person who dies adjusted for factors that increase or decrease an individual risk and various administrative fees for the companies so first thing between genders life insurance is generally less costly for females and it is more costly for males because probability of males dying is higher than females dying second it also depends on your lifestyle so if you are a smoker the life insurance premium will be high if you are into a profession that is more risky or more challenging like if you are a stunt bite worker in hollywood then your insurance premiums would be high and it depends from company to company because some companies have more administrative charges so their premiums are higher while some companies have lesser administrative charges so their premiums may be lower 
Now the big question is, do you need life insurance? So do you have people, so you need to answer basically two questions. Do you have people you need to protect financially? And do you have a partner who works? So if there are no dependents on you, there are there is no one who is financially dependent on you, then you may not need life insurance because effectively there is no financial loss caused by the event of your death because there is no financially de- person who is dependent on you so you may opt out of insurance but if someone is financially dependent on you your kids your spouse your parents etc then you may need to look into life insurance what are the objectives of life insurance how much money do you want to leave to your dependents should you die today and when you retire what income do you need how much will you able be able to pay for your insurance program so three things basically how much do you want to give back so in the event of death so do you want to take care for their for take care of your dependents for their entire life or do you want to take care for few years until they cope up with the event of your death and the life goes on for them also do you want your insurance to, in, are you saving in a plan that pays you in future so are you looking for using your insurance plans for your retirement and how much premium can you afford so based on your budget i may need an in life insurance policy of 5 million but i am not able to afford it based on my budget so my budget entails that i can only afford a policy of 1 million so based on your budget also your policy depends next is the income replacement by method typically you will need how much insurance to does a person typically need so one way to look at it is 70% of your salary for 7 years when the family adjust so current gross income not the net income the gross income income before taxes multiplied by 7 and multiplied by 0.7 so 7 years is generally a decent time means that is given to a family to adjust next why do we take 0.7 because some part of your salary goes towards you so your personal grooming your income taxes etc etc so if the person is not alive those expenses are not incurred so that's why we don't take entire 100% we just take 0.7 so this typically assumes a typical family with no liquid assets available that would otherwise reduce your life insurance needs next is the fa- this was the income replacement method so take your gross salary multiply it by 7 and multiply that thing by 0.7 that is the answer by income replacement the second way to go about it is the family need method it is a more thorough it is more thorough than the first method because it also considers employer provided insurance social benefits income and asset so this is family need method so what do you do first you calculate whatever you have okay so you whatever you have in your bank account in form of investments in form of support from your employer the employer provided life insurance etc etc then you calculate what your dependents need so you need to cover your burial expenses right away you need to have fine pay final income tax the final income tax is terminal income tax that is paid if a person dies so you need to have provisions for that estate probate and fees mortgages credit card debt you have to cover all of that then you have to cover living expenses for your family for the number of years you wish then you need to have emergency fund for your family you need to cover maybe you need to cover children's education etc etc so add all of that that gives you amount you need so first calculate amount you have that is assets you have insurance you have then calculate amount you need subtraction of that is the additional insurance you need to buy so just pause this side and go through it it is self explanatory 
assets that you have life insurance that you have part a whatever you need part b whatever you need covers your immediate expenses on in the event of death then support to your family members to cover their education etc etc and subtraction of the both is the amount of insurance you need to purchase next is type of life insurance policies so the basic type is term life insurance this is also called as pure life insurance because you pay premiums and you get covered and this insurance covers you only in the event of death it doesn't pay you if you stay alive so protection to what is term insurance term insurance means protection for a specified period of time 5 years 10 years 15 years etc if you don't pay premium coverage stop generally there is a grace period of 30 days until the means it the policy generally the insurance company gives you a grace period of 30 days but if you don't pay within that period also the policy lapses there are certain options that are there in life term insurance policies a renewability option means that at the end of the term you can renew the policy without having to give a physical test conversion option allows you to change your policy from term to whole life without a physical test we'll discuss what is whole life in the future slides term 200 so this is a term policy that remains in effect until the age of 100 so generally term policy is for a specific period 5 years 10 years 15 years but this policy stays on till 100 years so level premiums cost significantly less than permanent insurance so policies that are means up to 100 overall the premium cost is quite lower than the equivalent of getting couple of term insurances till the age of 100 but there is a decreasing term insurance in which your premium stays the same but the amount of coverage decreases as your age increases permanent life insurance purchase to cover lifelong needs so financial expenses supplementing a survivor's income capital gains or providing for a dependent children have level premiums which remain the same over lifetime of a policy so the premiums of permanent life insurance are generally higher because higher premiums paid in the earlier years are held as reserves to offset the increased cost in later year so permanent life insurance means you are covered throughout your life and once you die that proceeds are paid to your dependents so the premiums are quite high in the initial years because these premiums take care of the higher insurance cost in the later years and whatever you pay extra that are take considered as reserves so reserves are also referred to as cash value the amount received after giving up so if you give up your life insurance policy you generally receive cash value it is used if you are unable to pay premiums and can be borrowed as loan upon death face value of a policy is paid out to a named beneficiary permanent life insurance has following types whole life pay specified premium as long as you are alive pay stipulated sum to beneficiary upon death and has a cash value that is paid out if policy is given up so you you subscribe to a whole life policy whole life means you pay premiums throughout your life once you die in the event of death the policy pays to your beneficiaries right it also has a cash value because you are paying significantly higher than the cost of insurance so the higher higher amount that you pay is taken as reserves now you can borrow against this reserves or you can withdraw a part of this reserve second if you are unable to meet your premiums those premiums can be paid from the reserves second type of permanent life insurance is universal life policy combines term insurance and investment elements can pay variable premium amounts increased cash value reflects interest earned guaranteed not to be less than a specific amount uses current interest rates and can be changed to reflect prevailing uh, 
rates that are there death benefits are flexible and can change premium without changing coverage so universal life policy means you pay premium some part of it goes towards insurance the other part of it is invested now the returns that you get from this policy are there is a basic minimum that is provided to you a guaranteed amount plus you also get whatever interest is generated from the policy from the amount that you have invested then there is variable life policy so third type so premiums are guaranteed so cash value equals performance of investment funds or other index minimum death benefit guaranteed but can increase risk of poor investment is something that you bear so in variable life policy instead of making guaranteed investments like the previous one so this policy makes a guaranteed investment so it invests into interest generating assets so variable life policy invests in let's say stock markets or stock indexes so your returns are based on a particular index so if the index goes up your returns your policy value goes up if the index goes down your policy value goes down so the returns are quite variable endowment life insurance coverage begins from beginning of the contract to maturity guarantees payment of a specified term if you are still alive so it is similar to universal life policy so you keep on paying premium some part of the premium goes towards pure insurance some part of the premium is invested so up, upon the maturity date of the policy you are paid the cash value of the policy that in turn depends on the investments you have made and in the event of death you get the death benefits now premium that you pay depends on a lot of factors so it depends on amount of insurance so if you take higher amount of insurance the premium is high if you take low amount of insurance the premium is low your health class so what kind of health you have so if your health is good and you're quite fit the insurance premiums are low but if you have some diseases then the insurance premiums are higher it depends on your age so higher the age more is the premium gender it depends on whether you are a female male or the gender x it depends on your marital status it depends on your occupation so what kind of occupation you are into so maybe you are a stunt bike driver for hollywood then the insurance premiums are high it depends on the lifestyle you live that is the recreational activities you take part in for example if you are a skydiver i mean if you skydive for your hobbies then the insurance premium can be quite high types of insurance the most common type is group life insurance it is the term insurance that is provided mostly by your employers so they make a group and they negotiate with the insurance company based on that group so generally no physical is required only proof of employment so you need to work with that employer to get insured the insurance stops the moment you stop working credit life insurance so it is taken by the in debt company so generally debt is paid off if you die and it protects not you but the lender the bank so this is something that you can just have a read so it tries to summarize everything so policy type whole life universal term 200 and term so period of coverage for a whole life is entire life for a universal life is entire life it is up to the age of 100 and it depends on the term so it depends on the term in of the contract often renewable for additional terms but usually not past age of 70 or 75 you cannot renew a term policy premiums premiums are guaranteed usually remains the same premiums are flexible can be increased or decreased by policy holder within certain limits because you make investments also term 200 again they are guaranteed usually remains the same 
guaranteed and remains the same for the term of the policy but they increase with the new terms death benefits guaranteed in the contract remains level dividends may be used to enhance death benefits to the participating policy so sometimes if the insurance company is profitable they pay dividends to whole life policy holders so that may increase the death benefits and the cash benefit death benefits are flexible may increase or decrease according to fluctuations in cash value may have multiple insureds on the plan term 200 guaranteed in the contract remains same and term also it is guaranteed cash value it is guaranteed in the contract cash value in universal life is flexible because it depends on the investments may increase or decrease according to investment returns and level of policy holder deposits term 200 usually none so there is no cash value in term 200 policies some policy have a small cash value or others are there is no cash value usually there is none no cash value even in term policy then dividends dividends are payable for participating policies so whole life policies generally get dividends and other policies mostly are non participating so they don't get dividends advantages of these whole life and universal life provides protection for your entire family if, if kept in force premiums costs usually stay level regarding of regardless of your age and health has cash value that can be borrowed or used up for protection if the premiums are missed or withdrawals if the policy is no longer required other non forfeiture options allows the policy holders the possibility of continuing coverage if premiums are missed or discontinued because it has cash reserves right so you can use your reserves to pay premiums If the policy is participating, it receives dividends that can be taken in cash, left to accumulate at interest or used to purchase additional insurance. Can be so main thing is whole life is a participating policy. So if the insurance company is performing well, it pays you some dividend. So you participate in the performance of insurance company. Can be an endowment plan which pays out benefit at a specific age. Term 200 provides protection up to the hundred up to the age of 100 if kept in force. Premiums cost usually stay level regardless of age or health problems. Premium cost is lower relative to traditional permanent policies. It is suitable for short term insurance needs or specific liabilities such as mortgages. Provides more immediate protection because Initially, it is less expensive than permanent policy. So term policies are generally less expensive, can be converted to permanent insurance without medical evidence if it has convertible options often to the age of 65. Disadvantage, the initial cost may be too high for a sufficient amount of protection for your needs. So you need to take into account that because there is cash value the costs are quite high may be inefficient means of covering short term needs cash values tends to be small in early years you have to hold policies more than 10 years to make it justifiable so if you're ever buying whole life or universal life policies or any kind of endowment there is no point in giving up the policy before 10 years because then you lose money term 200 usually no cash values and no limited non forfeiture values so if term policy is disadvantage if renewed premiums increase with age and at some point higher premiums cost may make it difficult or impossible to continue coverage renewability coverage will terminate at some point commonly at the age of 65 to 75 if premium is not paid the policy terminates after 30 days and may not be reinstated if health is poor usually no cash values and non forfeiture options so if you see term policy is significantly cost less when you are young 
but as you age the term policy cost more permanent life policy cost more when you are young but as you age the permanent life policies generally cost less now you have to take if you now you have to consider means if you have to provide coverage for your dependents throughout their life so if you have a disabled kid then you need to cover his or her you know means uh, income throughout his life so it is better to get a permanent life policy but if you want to have coverage only for a specific period so let's say when you are earning and you are you have a family who is dependent on you your kids are still young and they're studying and you want to only cover that part of the portion it is better to get term insurance important provisions in a life insurance contract naming your beneficiaries so it is extremely important to name your beneficiaries if you do not name your beneficiaries the life insurance proceeds goes to your estate and then there is a probate process so it's a long road so instead of that always name your beneficiaries you can have contingent beneficiaries so you can have conditions so if they meet conditions they get paid in terms of life insurance example would be i can have a contingent payment so if my kid goes on to an university then he or she gets $20000 for education if if he or she doesn't go to university he doesn't length of grace periods for late payments so usually 28 to 31 days is the grace period given after that the policy stop reinstatement of a life policy means if the policy has not been turned in for cash it may be reinstated must but it must again qualify as an acceptable risk that is your health should be still be good non forfeiture clause prevents the forfeiture of future benefits if you drop the policy so if you drop the policy insurance coverage stops incontestability cause stipulates that after the policy has been effect for a period of time the company cannot dispute its validity so if the if you are paying premiums for a few years then insurance companies cannot deny you claim right based on certain let's say small errors that have you have made in the policy if you are paying premiums and they have not identified the errors for a few years then this clause helps you from uh, helps you such that the insurance companies cannot deny you claims suicide cost usually first two years so death benefit equals the amount of premium paid for two years so for two years you are only paid back the amount of premiums that you have paid but not the entire death benefit but after two years then you are paid back the whole death benefit in case of suicide automatic premium loans usually uses cash value to the pay to pay premiums if you are not able to pay it miss misstatement of age provision will pay benefit premiums so if you if you by mistake you have incorrect age that you have entered on the policy this clause helps you to get claims so even if you if you have misrepresented the age insurance company cannot deny you claims but it would adjust its claim based on the age so let's say i am 29 years old i am 30 years old but in my policy by mistake i put 29 and in the event of my death the insurance company will still pay me claim even if i have made a mistake but they will adjust my proceeds according to my age so instead of paying claims based on 29 they will pay claims based on age 30 policy loan provisions allows you to borrow against cash value a rider to a policy modifies its coverage by adding or excluding conditions or altering benefits example waiver of premium disability benefit so this rider are add on things so you can put it in into insurance so waiver of premium means if you get disabled the insurance you don't have to pay insurance premium the policy still remains in fa- in in you know policy still remains active but the premiums are covered by the insurance company now so you don't have to pay premiums if you have this rider accidental death benefits it is also called as double indemnity means 
if you die if the cause of death is because of accident the policy pays you twice the amount it usually pays guaranteed insurability option it means it cannot deny you from getting insurance even if your health deteriorates the policy still remains in place and you can renew it terminal illness so if you if you are if you get some terminal illness it pays some lump sum benefit and the policy still remains in place joint last to die so you can have a joint life insurance policy between you and your partner so whoever dies first get the other person gets the benefit so whenever you are buying a life insurance policy look at your present and future source of income savings group life insurance group annuities and government benefit so look what you are already getting right then determine from whom you want to buy your policy examine both private and public sources look for for company's rating look for agents so agents generally deal with one particular life insurance company and brokers brokers generally deal with many life insurance companies so you can go to a broker to get different options agents generally will have a specific option of a of one company but brokers can have multiple options so it's a better idea to go for a broker compare policy cost which are affected by company's cost of doing business return on their investment mortality rate feature policy contains competition amongst company so need to compare cost between different companies use interest adjusted index to compare policies takes into account the time value of money because most of the insurance companies there was a study that was done so most of the insurance companies most of the insurance policies are not even meeting inflation in terms of their return so it is very important to use interest adjusted index so that you can compare if the policy pays more than inflation right helps you make cost comparison amongst insurance companies that have different terms steps involved in obtaining and examining a policy includes submit application to a company so you provide personal information type of policy and limit of coverage medical history examine a policy read it line by line purchase every read every word of the contract get full explanation of terms and provisions so in case of any riders and all you need to get explained after purchase you can cancel the policy within 10 days without any penalty and make copies for your lawyers and your beneficiaries now the most important thing do not lie on your life insurance policies you were claim can be denied in case they find any misrepresentation because of fraud and all those things so if you want to be paid so do not lie so if you smoke state that you smoke right now settlement option so you can take death benefits or you means death benefits can be settled in different ways so options are the choices on for how you want the money to be paid out most 70% plus is taken as lump sum so most of us take means the life insurance proceeds are taken as lump sum payments then you can have it in installments so limited installments in equal installment for a specified number of years after your death life income option payment to beneficiaries for life for their life proceeds left with company pays interest to beneficiary so you have different you can take lump sum you can have installments for a limited term you can have payments for the entire life of the beneficiaries you can structure your closing options switching policies it's generally not prudent to switch policies so consumers lose millions because they don't hold cash life policies long enough or they purchase the long policies switch if benefit exceeds cost of getting another physical and paying policy setup cost so check while switching are you still insurable can you get all provisions you want and see the important is insurance agents may convince you to switch but in case of whole life universal life endowment policies if you switch before 10 years you generally lose out in terms of money 
so stay on with your policy for at least 10 years if it is a term policy it hardly matters but if you have cash enabled in it then it matters now next is medical insurance now most of the medical needs that we have are covered by our provincial policies so the common term for that is medicare so medicare is a provincial health policy that covers most of the canadians so most basic medical procedures are covered under the provincial government healthcare plans but we still need supplemental coverage for semi private and private hospital rooms private nursing care cosmetic surgeries physical testimony in court prescription drugs vision and dental care so what happens is if you get admitted through your provincial policy you generally have to share a room with three other persons so generally it is a 3 by 3 room or a 4 room means uh, care facility that you generally enroll with now if you want a private room or you want a semi private room where you have little bit of more privacy then you have to pay from your own pocket so you can get supplemental health insurance to do that then two major things are not covered by our provincial policy three major things i would say prescription drugs are not covered vision care is not covered and dental care is not covered so it's a prudent idea to get coverage for these three things healthcare cost outside canada can be significantly high and may not be covered by provincial plans so it is a good idea to get a supplemental life insurance so group health insurance 65% of all health insurance is sold as group plans so generally provided through an employer so employer sponsored employee may be part of the cost covers you and your immediate family and doesn't majorly require medicals but you need to be with that employer to get covered then you can also buy individual health care that covers one person or the family can be tailored to your particular needs so group health insurance generally provided by your employer individual health care you can buy so if you have a self employed person so you need to have an individual health care disability insurance so protects your most valuable assets your ability to earn income provides payment to replace income when an insured person is unable to work due to accidents or illness so disability is often defined as disability in own occupation so inability to perform the duties of your normal occupation so full benefits are paid even if you return to work in another capacity and regular occupation the inability to perform the duties of your ordinary occupation benefits reduced if you return to an alternative occupation so how it works there are two policies own occupation and regular occupation own occupation pays you no matter what so if you return to your own occupation or you change your occupation because of your disability and do something else then it pays you for no matter what regular occupation the benefits are reduced if you get an alternative job disability is defined as any occupation full benefits are paid only if you cannot perform the duties of any occupation for which you are ex- experience or education qualifies you total disability so pays you when you are unable to work at all and residual or partial disability benefits apply if you are able to work but at a reduced workload so disability insurance trade offs that you need to consider so there is a waiting or elimination period so longer is the waiting period lower are the premium duration of benefit so you can get covered for one or two years or you can get covered for 5 10 years also the premiums would be higher amount of benefits so how much benefits are you being paid accidental and sickness coverage and guaranteed renewability source of disability income so some part of it is already covered so your employer covers it then you can have private policies that cover it then government also provide support so it provide support in form of employment insurance and canada pension plan benefit so ei is a short term payment that is made for few weeks if you get disabled 
CPP payments are generally made for a longer period if you get disabled. Then there is workers' compensation and short term and long term welfare payment that you can look at. So, determining your disability income insurance. So, what do you do? It's very simple. So, you need to cover 70 to 80 percent of your after tax income, right? That is what you should target. Now, second step is find out how much your employer is providing, how much government is providing. Rest of it you have to cover. So, 80 percent of your income, let's say it's let's say fifty thousand dollars. Out of that, calculate how much. EI will provide, how much CPP will provide, how much other government programs will provide, how much your employer is providing and take insurance for the remaining. Consider waiting period and benefit periods. Critical illness insurance, this is important. Critical illness pays you when an illness is detected. It doesn't pay you in the event of death it pays you before that so that's very important because sometimes if you get diagnosed with critical illness it becomes very difficult and it's, it's an expensive affair so provides money for care if you're diagnosed with a serious illness or condition like cancer heart disease stroke etc now it's a it's a statistics that's quite scary there is one by four chance that you may suffer any of the critical illness diseases so the chances are quite high so it's a good and prudent idea to get a critical illness insurance generally pays while you are alive tax free lump sum payment within 30 days of being diagnosed most serious illnesses are not only treatable but curable but the cost are very high can be used to pay off other debts or take time off work typical policy provisions include waiver of premium premium refunded to beneficiary upon death Supplemental life insurance after considering health and disability coverage available from government, employers and other policies you may decide for further coverage generally taken for dental and vision. So reimbursement of dental services and supplies and preventive dental care like cleaning your teeth and all those things are also covered. Vision care insurance for your eyes. So health services insurance, so prescription drugs, semi-private, private hospital rooms, home care and nursing and other services of health professions that are not covered by government plans are covered. Travel insurance, hospital and medical in expenses incurred outside Canada are covered. Accidental death and dis dismemberment, dismemberment insurance, so it's form of a disability. Long term care insurance provides day in day out care for long term illness or disability. Long term care means if you are getting old and you need help in terms of uh, care workers and all those things then this insurance covers for that. Americans buy it a lot, Canadians not so much right but with, uh, with the aging population that we have means personally I see an uptake in this kind of insurance because then you are not dependent on anyone you you can cover for the care workers and the nursing workers that you need in your old age major provisions in an health insurance policy eligibility so it depends on age marital status and dependency requirement assigned benefits so what are the benefits that are assigned to you there are sometimes internal limits internal limits means for example my policy has 750 dollars internal limit for physio treatment so if any if i exceed beyond that i would not be covered co-payment clause the amount the patient pays after deductible exclusions and limitations so it has certain exclusions and certain limitations then you can coordinate benefits between different policies so if you and you your spouse has a policy that covers each other then you can coordinate the claims you can coordinate the benefits guaranteed renewable no medical required generally cancellation and termination health insurance trade-off so generally consider reimbursement versus indemnity so reimbursement works whatever you spend you're reimbursed for that indemnity pays a fixed amount no matter how much you spend 
internal limits versus aggregate limit internal limit specifies maximum benefit for a specific expense aggregate limit provides a total limit of coverage then you don't have internal limits for that deductible and coinsurance deductible means how much you pay and coinsurance is in terms of percentage so deductible is a dollar amount so for hundred dollars i pay beyond that life insurance means health insurance company covers it that is a form of deductible coinsurance means 10 percent i cover 90 percent the health insurance company covers so this is an example of coinsurance coinsurance expressed as percentage deductibles expressed as dollar amount then there are out of pocket limits now this is important healthcare costs have significantly increased so there were around 100 billion dollars in 2000 and in 2010 it was around it is around 200 billion dollars so it is expected that the current form of insurance government may not be able to continue so it's a good idea to get a private insurance so that covers this chapter thank you for listening see you in next recording